Hey guys, Gabby here, Baseball Queen in the Flesh. Happy 2020. I know this year has been crazy. I should know. Um, unfortunately, I lost my job. So, um, but I did find a new one, which is great. And I've been quarantining and everything and staying away from people. And I have tons of masks, just like everybody else. Um, I definitely... Um, do want to say that, you know, I know we are all having a hard time right now, but definitely positive vibes your way, positive vibes for the rest of the year, okay? So, first of all, I definitely want to go in and say how sorry I am for ghosting you guys. Um, unfortunately, last year, I lost my grandmother due to brain cancer. And she was my biggest, one of my biggest supporters besides my mom. She was always the one that always pushed me into doing what I wanted to do and not what she thought was best for me. So what she thought was best for me is me doing what I love, which is baseball and statistics. So um, I definitely want to dedicate this video to her and um, I definitely miss her every day but I know that she's still here with us. So, so as you guys can tell, I'm wearing my Joe Kelly Fight Club shirt. Um, I bought it at Sully's brand, which is based out of Boston. So definitely shout out to them. Um, their website is sullysbrand.com. Um, I buy all my Boston stuff from there, but I definitely love that they did a Dodgers color for this one, especially with Joe Kelly versus Carlos Carrera. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, now my shirt is definitely a hint on what we will be talking about today. I've decided that I'm going to do something called the Decade Series. I know this year was definitely a little bit of a letdown where there was only a couple weeks of spring training and then all of a sudden there was nothing and then we had 60 games and now tomorrow we're starting the World Series with the Rays versus the Dodgers. So um, I am definitely excited for that series and I'm super anxious to see who's going to win this and how far we're going to go. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is today's let today's video slash podcast is going to be about um, starting pitchers of the decade, the relievers, and of course the second best, the catchers, because of course you can't have good pitching without a good catcher. So let's go ahead and dive on to, into this and we're going to go ahead and start on with the top 10 starting pitchers of the decade. So number 10 is going to be John Lester. John Lester is definitely a player that is near and dear to my heart. Um, he's one of the reasons why I am definitely a Cubs fan on the side. So um, Lester has already won a World Series and he's overcome cancer um, when this decade began. He's made three all-star teams with the Red Sox. In 2016, he also won the World Series with the Cubs. So how amazing is that? Number nine is going to be Jacob deGrom. Um, he's won his second Cy Young Award in 2019. And according to the B-War, he's the sixth best Mets player in their history. And I definitely agree. I definitely agree, agree, agree to that. Number eight is going to be David Price. He's so impossibly young and incredible as the 22 year old that he was when he was playing for the Rays and on their championship team. He has been constantly one of the top pitchers of the decade according to the AL and the ERA twice. His game started three times his game started three times and strikeouts once. So he's definitely leading in that. Um, David Price um, was traded from the Red Sox to the Dodgers this past season along with Mookie Betts, um, as everybody knows. Um, he did decide this season to opt out due to COVID-19 concerns. 
Number seven is going to be Zach Greinke. He won the American League Cy Young Award in 2009. And when he was with the Dodgers in 2015, he put a 166 ERA, won 19 games, and somehow he still finished second in the Cy Young. You know, that goes to show dedication and perseverance for that Cy Young Award. Zach Greinke is even a five-time Gold Glove winner and a lifetime of a 224 hitter. Arsenal, you gotta love a versatile player. The next person is gonna be Cole Hamels. He currently plays for the Cubs. Um, he's gotten better as he um, as he has hit his mid 30s. His ERA is a 264 with Chicago, and he's nearly a full run better than what he was when he was with Philly. And guess what? His hair still looks great. That's the best part. So yeah. Number five is going to be Madison Bumgarner. He's not even top ten in the war, or game started, or ERA, but he is definitely the centerpiece of the Giants winning the World Series three times this past decade. Just let that sink in. They won three times in the past decade a World Series. That's amazing. Number four is going to be Chris Sale. He was actually a reliever from 2010 to 2011, notching 12 saves in those years. How amazing is that? The White Sox finally let him start in 2012 for seven consecutive All-Star seasons. He finished top six in the Cy Young All-Star voting for all seven years. Um, he did have some struggles in 2019, but he still had the second highest knockout rate of his career. How amazing is that? When Christelle got traded over to the Red Sox, let me tell you about this. I was on the fence about it. I wasn't sure. I didn't know Christelle. But when Chris Sale was there for us in 2018, I definitely was a believer. So, number three is going to be Max Scherzer, or as everybody calls him, Mad Max. Um, in 2013, he became the permanent pitcher of his age. Um, so, he is one of the best pitchers, and he definitely helped Washington get their first World Series championship ring. Number two is everybody's favorite, Justin Verlander. Um, he led the majors in wins once, strikeouts in once, and losses once. In 2011, he won his first Cy Young Award. And um, in 2017, everybody was shocked because, of course, he was traded over to the Houston Astros. But he has a 246 ERA with Houston. Um, Verlander also got himself a World Series ring in 2017 and another Cy Young Award and possibly a nice spot in Cooperstown. So that is definitely exciting. Um, I do know that Justin Verlander will be out for next season. As for he did have Tommy John surgery, so we definitely do wish him the best here. So number one is going to be Clayton Kershaw. He won his first National Cy Young Award at the age of 23 in 2011 which is amazing, and he's won two more since then. He was the last pitcher to win an MVP award in 2014. He's had an ERA under a one under 183 three times, and his career ERA, 241. What is there to ask for? Your grandchildren are going to be asking you, can you tell me how awesome Clayton Kershaw was back in your day? So, the next list is going to be the top 10 relievers of the decade. And number 10, even though he played only three seasons of the decade, is going to be the amazing Mariano Rivera. Um, he still had, during those three years, 44 saves and an ERA of a 211. I mean, isn't that amazing? He's 43. Wouldn't you still want him to come and relieve you? So number nine is going to be Tyler Clippard. He made two All-Star games in the decade, and he has appeared more than 
any other pitcher in the games. So that's amazing. Number eight is going to be Greg Holland. Um, before missing the 2016 season, recovering from Tommy John surgery, he came back and he came back stronger than ever. He returned 41 games for the Rockies in 2017. I definitely know that Tommy John surgery is definitely hard on pitchers and for him to come back and be stronger and just show off is just amazing to me. Number seven is going to be David Robertson. He was a full-time closer for one year in New York and three years in Chicago. And he's only made the All-Star team one time. So, it's definitely interesting. Okay, number six is Fernando Rodney, as everybody knows. Um, don't let his longevity fool you because he has definitely been with a lot of teams. He's been with the Angels from 2010 through 2011. He's been with Seattle from 2014 to 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. He's been with the Tampa Bay Rays from 2012 to 13. He's been with the Chicago Cubs 2015. 2016, he was with the Padres and with um, the Marlins. He was with Arizona in 2017. Minnesota in 2018. Oakland with 2018 and 19. And in Washington in this past year of 2019. At his best, Rodney was overpowering with closure, overpowering with closure as any baseball. 48 saves in 2014 at the age of 37. He led in the majors. He's still hanging around too. He's the only active player that was born before 19 that was born in 1970. So we just assume that he's just gonna be around until 2029. So, and. I totally forgot. Didn't the Washington Nationals just win their first World Series? He's got a nice World Series ring in that trophy. So, number four is going to be... Er, nope. <laughs> number five. Number five is going to be Zach Britton. He's a converted starter, which is absolutely amazing to me. As I said, I love a versatile player. Um, his sinker has been basically unhittable for the past years. So, that's awesome. Number four is going to be Wade Davis. Wade Davis um, was a part of the bullpen um, with the Royals in 2014. And he went on a truly, truly astonishing, astonishing, <laughs> astonishing three-year run, putting... Those three years, his ERA was a 1, a .94, and a 187 from 2014 to 16. So, and of course, he definitely did finish off with a lovely World Series ring. Number three is going to be a Roldis Chapman. Um, he's a revolutionized baseball player of this decade, especially with the stat cast velocity that he has. He has thrown so much harder than anyone else, and he also has four all-star appearances with the New York Yankees, so that's awesome. Number two is going to be Kenley Jansen. Oh, I'm sorry. The Reds. Four years with the Reds. <laughs> Number two is going to be Kenley Jansen. Kenley Jansen is a remarkably consistent, especially when he's arrived to um, Los Angeles in 2010. His best season was in 2017, which he led in the NL with 41 saves, had a 132 ERA, and finished fifth in the Cy Young. Please, somebody give this man a Cy Young award. And number one is going to be Craig Kimbrell. He's earned in 20 and two-thirds innings. His, he's only given up one earned run in two, 20 and two-thirds innings. His rookie season in 2010 and was dominated dominant every season after that. NL leading the, <laughs> leading the NL in saves four times and making seven all-star teams. Kimbrell has... A career of 41.6% strikeout rate, which is downright absurd. So, I definitely did say 
you can't have a good team without a good pitcher and a catcher, right? So let's go ahead and go through the top 10 of catchers. So number 10 is going to be um, Francisco Trevally. Um, he spent his first half of the 2010s backing up um, George Pastata, Martin, and McCann, although he was suspended for 50 games in the 2013 part of the biogenesis scandal. Um, the Yankees did trade him in 2014, um, which is when his career finally took off. Number nine is going to be Wilson Ramos. He's only played more than 128 games twice. He's won the Silver Slugger Award in 2016, putting up his career best of a 307, 354, 496 line. When he's healthy, he's definitely a vital part of any lineup. Number eight is going to be Matt Wieters. Um, he has made four All-Star games of the past decade, won two gold gloves, and he's hit 67 home runs from 2011 to 2013. Number seven is going to be Carlos Ruiz. He's won one World Series in the past previous decade, but he's had his best years in this one, including a fantastic 2012, which he's hit a 325 with 16 home runs. He's made his lone All-Star game. He's actually received an NLVP award in three consecutive years from 2010 to 2012, and he's caught four no-hitters this decade, including Roy Halladay's perfect game. Number six is going to be Brian McCann. Brian McCann was an all-star every year from 2006 to 2011. He leads all catchers this decade in home runs with 179. He's third in RBIs, fifth in hits and runs, and fourth in total games played. And he's also won his first World Series ring. Next is going to be Salvador Perez. He currently plays for the Royals. Um, his bat has power, but his OBP has always been a problem. So we will definitely be looking to see um, about changes in regards to that. Um, everybody definitely does compare him to Yadier Molina, which I love. Number four is going to be Jonathan Lucroy. After the 2014 season, um, he didn't look like the best catcher in baseball, but he did look like a, a potential MVP candidate. Um... In 2014, he slashed a 301, 373, and a 465, leading the majors in doubles and breaking the record for catchers. And he also won a Fielding Bible Award. So, number three is going to be Russell Martin. Um, wherever you look at postseason, you see Martin. He's been there with the Dodgers three times, the Yankees, the Pirates, and the Blue Jays twice. From 2006 to 2016, Martin's teams only missed the postseason twice. So that's amazing. Number two is one of my favorite catchers. It's going to be Yadier Molina. Um, he has caught far more games than Buster Posey or anybody else. He's won seven gold gloves this decade. And he has the m most stolen bases than any other catcher in this decade. And number one is going to be Buster Posey. Um, Busty, Buster Posey leads all catchers in the decades in war with nearly 11 full wins. Is the only catcher to put up a 300 batting average this decade. He's won an MVP for National League and NL Rookie of the Year award. And has also received an L NL MVP award six times. Oh yeah. And also, he's won three World Series that past decade. So, I am so excited to go through this with you guys. Um, I want to know what you guys are thinking, what you think that I should add on to this. So, definitely going through this is super fun for me. And it definitely helps me with my knowledge in regards to baseball. As everybody knows, I love baseball so much. 
I guess they call, I guess that's why they call me the queen. So I am so excited to see. Um, I am super excited for tomorrow as for we start off with the Dodgers versus the Rays in the World Series. So this is so exciting. This will be the Rays second time going to the World Series since 2008. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if another team wins a World Series that has never won a World Series. So we'll see. Or is the LA luck on their side, on the Dodgers side? I guess we'll never know. So I definitely want to thank you guys for joining me and watching my um, video, my podcast. Um, this is something that is very near and dear to my heart, like I said, and it means a lot to me. I just love this so much. So um, I'm definitely going to leave you guys with a quote. And the quote of the day today is going to be, baseball is so fine that it is played on a diamond. So um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your love and support. Um, like I said, I dedicated this one to my grandmother, um, so, and thank you guys too, so, and just like that, peace, love, and baseball.